Good evening, brothers and sisters. We first give honor to God um, for all that he's done and allowing us another opportunity to come to you. And I'd like to say um, good afternoon to all of you and hope that you've had a good day. This is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. God is still in the blessing business, no matter what we may be going through, no matter what it looks like. God is still God and he's in the blessing business. Amen. Amen. We do solicit your prayers for all of the ones who are sick and shut in and in bereavement. We um, ask that you pray for folks' comfort when they're going through their times of adversity and, and mourning and sadness because it can so easily be our time um, on tomorrow. Amen. Amen. Um, there is a word that the Lord has given us this afternoon and we like to um, share the word in which he's laid on our heart to give. Amen. But before we get into our word, I ask that you join me in a word of prayer. Dear Father, we come in the name of Jesus, thanking you for being so good to us. Thank you for your grace, your mercy. Thank you for looking beyond all of our faults and seeing our needs. God, you've been so good to us, better to us than we've been to ourselves. And we thank you for it. Now, Father, we ask um, that you allow me to give you this word, give them this word that you've laid on our heart. Touch the hearts and the minds of your people and let them be receptive to this world, this word. Give me the boldness to give it in the way that you had me to lay it out on you. You, you, you want it to be delivered. Father, we thank you. We ask that you continue to bless this ministry and all ministries you have planned in your name. Lift up and strengthen those who are who are down, who are need, in need of comfort, who are troubled in mind. Father, we will forever give you praise, honor, and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Our word for today is found in the book of Psalms, the 25th number of the book of Psalms. 25th number of the book of Psalms, and I'd like to look at that second verse. Amen. 20, Psalm 25 and two and it reads oh my god i trust in thee let me not be ashamed let not mine enemies triumph over me amen and we like to use as a thought today trusting god even in disappointment trusting god even in disappointment um, as you recall on last week, my, my message or my, my teaching was that I trust in the Lord. And this week, God has laid on our heart again to talk about trusting in him, even in disappointment. I don't know if this, this, this word is for, for me or who it's for, but God is telling us that we have to have a stronger, a stronger trust in him. I don't know if it's for what's coming, what, what's coming before us or what we're about to go through individually in our lives. God is saying no matter what it looks like to trust in him. Amen. Life can be full of demanding circumstances and situations. And life can take the best that we have to offer and then treat it with unconcern and, and contempt or disrespect. You want, to give, you want to give it your best shot, but what if your best shot falls short? And all of us, have hap that's happened to in our lives, we've done the best that we can, and then it still seemed like it wasn't good enough. In life, I found out that there are always the possibility of disappointment. There's always the possibility that some bitter pills will have to be swallowed where you're so sure about something and then it doesn't turn out like we were claiming or we were, we were talking about. There's always the, op the, the, the um, possibility that the plans and the dreams that we've shared with others may turn out to mock us um, in our efforts. 
See, life in this dispensation can be a thankless affair that, that ties your soul to the very core, or tries your soul to the very core of its being. How will we deal with the burden of knowing that things didn't turn out how we had planned? How will we continue to press on, as I talked about Sunday, how will we continue to press on when disappointment looms like a ghost before us? We, we, we've tried our best, we've given it our all, and still we fail, or still the plans fall th through, still we come up short. How are we going to deal with that? How are we going to keep on going to the next step or to the next phase? And, and not only that, but it can get worse. Not only we have to deal with the disappointment of our dreams and our plans falling through, not only, but, but we, we also have to contend with those who don't have our best interests at heart. Everybody don't like you. Everybody is not for you. And, and some of us have to learn that the hard way when we think that we want to do everything right and everybody should be liking us, but somebody, but everybody should be liking us, but, but everybody is not going to like you. You know, we, have to, we may have to deal with those who, who actively oppose everything that we're trying to accomplish. And all along the way, they may be critical of, of, of what we try to do. And, and instead of trying to help us out, they criticize us and they put us down and they may they may be trying everything that they can to sabotage our plans and initiatives instead of supporting us. They're trying to look for flaws. They're trying to throw a monkey wrench in, in, in the mechanics so things will mess up. They don't want us to succeed. They don't want you to succeed. And, and, and they may do everything um, that they can to make sure that the original prosnoctication or the, the predictions come true. They, they, they'll try everything in their power to make sure that what they said will happen. They will not want you to succeed. These folks are praying that you fail rather than be successful. And how will we stand it if our enemies shower us with scorn? When they're laughing at us in our ears and behind our backs and, and pointing fingers at us, how will we stand if they laugh at us? How will we deal with the jeers and, and the I told you so's that they rub in your face? Because there are a lot of folks in this world that don't want to see you succeed in the kingdom. They don't want to see you succeed in life because they may have something against you. Amen. And the frightful possibilities are enough to make you give up the idea to do anything because just thinking about not being able to do this may may make you not even want to try it or attempt whatever's been laid on your heart. And for the people without God, life can make them want to pack it in altogether. Life can make them want to give it up because these folks depend solely on the affirmation and support of others to, to, to encourage them to go on. And if they don't have that support once they fail or once a disappointment comes, they give up and they never try again. And when they don't receive the affirmation and the support, they, they have nobody and nothing else to inspire them and to motivate them to keep on trying. But it's different for the people who have God in their lives. Amen. See, these people who, who, who put their trust and their faith in him, even in the midst of disappointment, they, they still trust God. And they're not blind. A person that trusts God is not blind. They don't go through life with, with this blind faith. They don't go through life thinking that everything they touch will turn to gold. They, they're, in, they're realistic. In there, they're knowing that everything may not work like they they may want it to work out. You got to understand that disappointments are part of life. Afflictions are part of life. Troubles are part of life. And things aren't going to turn out the way that you want them to all the time. Amen. The, we see the possibilities of, of dire disappointments and, and laughter coming from the enemy because things didn't work out. Not only do we have to face the disappointment, but we also have to face those naysayers and those people who told us that we couldn't do it and them laughing at us. Amen. 
How many times have we, we told folks of, uh, of the prayer that we've prayed in faith and we believed God for it, but it didn't turn out like we wanted it to turn out? The loved one that we were praying for and laying hands on and, 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 and greasing down with oil, they died anyway. How about the marriage that we were praying for God to hold together, but it ended up in divorce anyway? How about the house that was going into foreclosure, but we believed God that he would make a way, but yet it entered into foreclosure and we had to move anyway? How about that job that we know that we were qualified for and we felt that God had it for us, but it was given to somebody else. How do we deal with that? I'll tell you how I deal with it. We trust God. We go forth anyway in the name of the Lord because, first of all, we know that he is still with us. Even in our disappointments, in our failures, we got to have the faith that God is still with us even in times of disappointment. Amen. Things may not work out exactly as expected, but, but they will work out eventually somehow. Because the people of God realize that our wants may not be God's will. Mm, let me say that again. The people of God realizes they, they are realistic in the fact that because we want it, it still may not be God's will and it, we may not get it. Amen. But because we trust God and we trust in his will, we can deal with not receiving what we want. Amen. That's why Paul says, Paul says in Romans 8 and 28, he says, and we know this is in our mind and we know those who trust God and we know that all things work together. What, is, what are all things? All things are the good things and the bad things, the disappointing things, the successful things. All of these things work together for good. To them that love God, to them that trust God, to them that's holding on to his unchanging hand, to them who are the called according to his purpose. I know that I'm disappointed. I know I didn't get what I expected, but I'm trusting God and his will that he knew what's best for me. That's how we can trust God in the midst of our disappointments. We know that he's still there. And if and if he didn't give it to us. If he didn't give it to us, it was not in his will and we trust him and his will. Now, now get this, even though the failure and the disappointment is going to come, you better realize, oh, yeah, the enemy is watching. He sees your your, your disappointment. He, he's, he's heard about or he's seen your failure and he's still going to laugh at you. Oh, yeah, he's going to laugh his behind off because he's going to come at you. I told you so. I told you, you never should have done that. I told you, you didn't have, you wasn't qualified for it. You couldn't do it. And I blah, blah, blah. And they're going to say it. But that's all right. That's all right. Let them laugh. Let them talk. Let them scorn you. But their laughter won't last too long because God will be there with us. And God is going to make sure of that. A Amen. And how do I know this? Because God said in Isaiah 54 and 17, he said, no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. And we when most of the time we stop right there. We stop at the weapon. We stop at the trick. We stop at the trap. But there's another part to verse number 17 in that chapter. It says, and every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment, sh thou shalt condemn. Amen. You're going to be able to turn back and say, uh-huh, I know what you said, but God said this. I know what you said, but God did this. I know how you said it was going to turn out, but God meant it this way. A Amen. And this is the heritage of the servants of the Lord and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. In other words, God is saying that he will protect us. If we put our trust in him, even in the midst of disappointment, even in the midst of failure, God say, I'll protect you from the enemy, even though they might be laughing, let them laugh. I still got you. Amen. This is what God said. He said, whether the enemy try to set a trap for us, whether they criticize us, whether they defame us and talk and run their mouth about us. God said, I will take care of you. And Jesus even says in John 16 and 20, I'm getting happy here. Jesus says, verily, verily, I say unto you that ye shall weep and lament, but the world shall rejoice. 
You're going to go through some things and you're going to be sad and you're going to be disappoint, disappointed. You're going to hurt. But the world is going to laugh. They're going to rejoice over your sadness and your sorrow. He says, you're going to be sorrowful. Jesus says, and ye shall be sorrowful. These things are coming. Don't think that you're going to be happy. Go lucky all your life just because you're saved, just because you believe in Christ. You're going to have some afflictions. You're going to have some troubles. You're going to have some trials. Amen. Jesus says, and you shall be sorrowful, but your sorrow shall be turned into joy. Boy, I wish I had a church in here. Your sorrow shall be turned into joy. Weeping may last for a night, but the joy will come in the morning if we hold on and trust in the Lord. Amen. Let them laugh. Let them laugh at you. It's all right. But sooner or later, you're going to be the one who's going to be laughing. This is a promise that God gives us. So my brothers and sisters, my brothers and sisters, go ahead. Go ahead with the plans and initiatives that the Holy Ghost has placed in your heart. If God told you to go out and start the business, if God told you to go out and apply for that job, if God told you to do this or do that, you go ahead in the name of the Lord. There's a reason why he told you to do this. No matter how crazy it may sound to the folks around you, no matter how crazy it may sound to those naysayers who say that it can't happen, you step out on faith knowing that God is with you. And don't fear the disappointment. I've told you disappointment is a part of life. Don't fear the disappointment and don't worry about the enemy laughing at you. It may not feel good, but don't worry about it for God is with you. God told Joshua when he was about to lead the children of Israel into the land of Canaan after Moses died in Joshua one and nine. God said, have not I commanded thee be strong and of good courage. Be strong and courageous. Be not afraid. Neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee whithersoever you go. In other words, God said, don't you don't have anything to worry about as long as you put me first and put your trust in me and know that I am with you. You just go on anyhow, despite of what they're saying, despite despite what families do. If they don't want to go, you go on by yourself. I am with you. And then Paul comes back and he sums it all up in Romans 8 and 31 when Paul says, what shall we say to these things? I know it was pertaining to something else, but we can put what shall we say to the folks laughing at us? What shall we say to the disappointment and failures? What shall we say to these things? Paul finished it up in the part B of that verse. He said, if God be for us, (laughs) if God be for us, who can be against us. With God on our side, we have the majority. David says in Psalm 124, if it had not been the Lord who was on our side, now may Israel say, but we today can say the same thing. If it had not been the Lord who was on our side in times past, we wouldn't be here today, but because we put our trust in the Lord, Mm. We put our trust in the Lord, even in times of disappointment. God will, God will be with us and let us know that, my child, it's all going to work out for your good. Amen. So hold on. Don't be afraid to try what God has dropped in your spirit. Don't be afraid. Don't be discouraged. Even if disappointment comes, you hold on and you trust God. You believe God. Amen. Amen. God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. I hope that we've said something that's been encouraging to you and enlightening to you to trust God. And as I said, God may be talking to me, but I know he's always talking to me. But this is for somebody. This is two weeks in a row. And in in the mouth of two or three, let every word be established. God confirms his word when it comes forth twice. Joseph said that to the Pharaoh back in Genesis. Amen. When he dreamed the same dream twice and he knew it was of God. So God is confirming his word. Trust in him. Step out. Whatever God laid on your heart, step out. Do what God has told you to do. Even in the midst of disappointment, you still trust God. God. 
Amen. Thank you so much for tuning in and and supporting this channel. We just we just thank you so much. You you um you've been with us for the last three and a half years, and we thank you for continuing to um, join in and sign on. This is not a paid channel or anything like that. Believe me, a brother ain't getting nothing for this, but I'm doing what God has called me to do to get a word out to you. So thank you for sharing with family and friends. Some of you say, well, I send it to such and such, my coworkers or my family and stuff like this. Continue to do so. Continue to do so. Let God's word spread. Amen. We thank you so much for doing that. And if you ever find yourself in the Blarney area, in the Baxley area, and you um, you want to come out to miss, but come on out. We're there every Sunday, every Sunday morning, first, second, third, fourth, and fifth Sunday, if there be any, unless there's some kind of special um, outing that we're doing, going to fellowship with somebody else, but that'll be announced before beforehand. But other than that, we'll be right there in the house. Sunday school starts at 10 o'clock. And morning worship starts between 1115 and 1130 right after Sunday school. So come on out. We would love to have you there. We'd love to see you there. Amen. And if you want to become a, a partner with us and you want to sow a seed in this ministry, if the word is blessing you, feel free to do so. I'm not getting on here. I, I don't, we don't. God has really blessed us. We're not begging for anything. But if you want to sow in, I, because I know sometimes God lays on your heart to 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 give and to be. So we give you the opportunity to do to do so in this ministry. Um, you can use the address down at the bottom of the screen down there. That's Mispa Baptist Church, Post Office Box 1275, Baxley, Georgia 31515. Amen. And send a, a personal check, cashier's check, our money order to that address. And anything you do, it'll be more than appreciated. You're sowing a seed into good ground. Amen. God will bless. Amen. Amen. Keep in prayer all of um, the sick, shut in, all of those in bereavement, all of those in prison, all of those who are going through um, emotional, psychological problems. Pray for we need prayer hear about everyday mass shootings and and disease famine war um crazy stuff in the government pray folks pray we need prayer amen for this world we need prayer christ is soon to return but we need prayer amen also i mentioned disease covid and all this other stuff and it's coming up to flu season and and, and covid is on the rise so make sure that you are staying safe so stay safe, watch yourself, wear your mask. If you don't have to be around crowded areas, don't, but just be careful with yourselves. Amen. Amen. Got to get out of here. I love you. I love you. Continue to pray for me as I pray for all of you. And we can't wait to get back into the house on Sunday. Looking forward to you. And if you join us, God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. We thank you. I'd like to give a special shout out to uh, our brother Michael Adams who gave his life to the Lord last week when we had baptism and, and, and fellowship. Amen. We thank God for him. So if you have family members out, keep them in prayer. Invite them to church. Bring them to church with you. And it may be that there, it may be their day that the Lord touched their heart and turn them around. God bless you. We hope to see you soon. I love you.